go. <clears throat> Hello, guys. Good evening. Hello, Jenny. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Maritza. Hi, Maritza, Maria, Elba. Hi, teacher. How are you doing today, girls? How is everything going for you? Oh. ¿Qué tal, Jenny? Oh, wow. Jenny? No. Yes, okay. You were muted. I, I going to... Pardon? I going to work. You, you're going to work. Yes, I'm going to work and I'm going to... to visit uh, the social security. Oh, I see. <laughs> So did you go to work and then you went to the social security or are you going to go later? Um, I, 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 I am going to go. Oh, I see. So you're going to go in the future, maybe tomorrow or some other day. Today I, 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 did, uh, today I, I, I going to, I visit the, the social security and going to work. Oh, okay. So then in that case, you went to work. I went to work and went to, went to the visit. And you visited. went to, and you visited the social security as well. Okay. So those two things. Okay. Uh -huh. I see. All right. Very good. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Okay. Well, I hope that you are feeling good because usually when we go to the social security is because we are not feeling good because we are sick sometimes so hopefully you are feeling good yes i'm feeling good just um, este, ¿cómo se puede decir? Como preventivo. Uh, it was just a preventive checkup or something like that maybe it's just a preventive preventive checkup okay very good very good i see that's fine yeah and i think that we we should do that sometimes I mean, we don't pay attention to, to those kind of things, but sometimes it's better uh, to prevent things before they happen. You know, like when we get the vaccines, usually it's because we want to avoid getting an infection. We are trying to avoid uh, catching a virus or things like that, right? So very good. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Uh, good evening, guys. Uh, para los que acaban de llegar, muchas gracias por estar aquí otra vez. Muchas gracias, guys. Thank you. Good evening, Alejandro. How are you, teacher? I'm doing pretty good. Thank you for asking, Alejandro. How about you? How is your day going? I find teacher. Thank you. Bless Very you. good. Very blessed. Very good. I can see that you're busy. You you always busy, Alejandro. Yes, teacher. Yes. Um, yeah, I always am busy. Okay. But the the, the day the day is, is too short for me. I see. But yes. That is great. Yes. I see. I can see. That yeah, is it, nice. seems, it seems like for you, uh, time is never enough. It seems like your, the day is too short, just like you said. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. A, a uno va creciendo, va sucediendo más eso. <laughs> tiene razón, tiene razón, eso pasa. Yeah. A mí, cada vez me It's pasa so... más. Eh, a veces me pongo a pensar cómo antes tenía tanto tiempo para libre. Y ahora, yeah. pues, ya, ya no es así, ¿verdad? Ya no tengo tiempo. Yes. Yes, it's true. It's <laughs> true. Happens. Yeah, very good. Okay, so okay. Well, thank you for coming, guys. Uh, I think that we can just wait for a few more seconds so the rest of the classmates can join the class. In the meantime, uh, I would like to ask you guys: Do you have any questions? Uh, well, for today we are going to be uh, talking about the same topic that we were talking yesterday. Uh, yesterday we basically just had like an introduction to the topic. We just learned like the structure. We learned when we are going to use uh, will for the simple future. So today we're going to continue with that. And we are also going to practice, okay? Because we didn't have an opportunity to practice yesterday. So we're going to practice today. Okay, vamos a ver, guys. Ya estamos 12. Bueno, y 
eh, quería comentarles, guys, creo que ustedes ya vieron que mañana no tenemos clase, ¿verdad? Ya está confirmado de parte de administración, así que mañana vamos a descansar y nos vamos a ver hasta el jueves. Tenemos clases el jueves y el día viernes. Y solamente. Ya casi, ya casi, guys. Así okay. que los animo a que sigamos. Ya casi terminamos. Un poquito más, guys, y terminamos con esto. Okay, teacher. Very good. Así que pues mañana pues pueden descansar, se pueden levantar tarde. Supongo que la mayoría descansamos, ¿verdad? Bueno, en mi caso yo voy a trabajar, pero tal vez ustedes sí puedan descansar. Creo, creo que Alejandro también va a trabajar. Yes. I'm sorry for you, teacher. Yes, I mean, that's something that happens. But I can see that uh, some of you are going to work tomorrow, so that's, I mean, that makes me, that that's like a relief. That's like, it doesn't make me feel like I'm lonely in this. So that's fine. Okay. So like I was saying, guys, uh, today we're going to be talking about the simple future. Again, we are going to practice because yesterday we didn't have enough time for that. So today we are going to practice. Ok, bueno, entonces, eh, permítanme un instante, guys, y les voy a compartir la presentación. Para que podamos comenzar, vamos a hacer un pequeño recordatorio antes de que podamos empezar con la clase, rapidito. Bueno, entonces, vamos a ver. Eh, ¿Se acuerdan ustedes de en qué casos íbamos a utilizar nosotros Will? El día de ayer estuvimos hablando acerca de eso. Y dijimos que habían como tres escenarios más o menos en los cuales nosotros lo utilizábamos por lo general. No sé si alguien se acuerda de eso. Yo me acuerdo que algo así como Ay, sí. una probabilidad de que suceda algo, pero no es algo concreto. Mm -hmm. No hay un okay. plan concreto, digamos. Very good. Yes, thank you. Jenny, yes, I'm sorry, Ricardo, you wanted to say something? Cuando se habla de pronóstico, pero que no están como ya definido. Correcto. Very good. Very good. Ricardo, so yes. We were saying that we are going to use the future with will in situations like that. Just like Jenny and Ricardo said. When we're talking about... Uh, I remember about... one more. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, when we uh, get a, a spontaneous answer That is correct. That is correct, Boris. Yeah, so for example, if we are trying to order uh, something at a restaurant, or if we want to uh, just say something that we decided at the moment that we are speaking, we usually use will for those situations, right? Just like Boris said. So for example, if you want to order food, most of the times you just say, I'll have, I will have a hamburger. Things like that, okay? So, very good, guys. That is correct. So, those are the scenarios when we are going to use will, okay? So, I'm going to share the presentation with you one more time, guys. Aquí, lo vamos a ver rapidito, ¿verdad? Aquí está, justo lo que acaban de decir. Okay, vimos la estructura también, eh, rápidamente. Rápidamente, sujeto, más el verbo will como auxiliar. Y luego el verbo en la forma base, ¿de acuerdo? No se va a cambiar el verbo, dijimos eso. Eh, no importa si es una negación o si es una pregunta, el verbo se mantiene de la misma forma, ¿ok? No cambia. For example, I will not eat chicken, or I will not go to the party, ¿ok? Eh, no cambia el verbo, siempre es el verbo en la forma base. Eh, dijimos que para las preguntas eh, es la misma fórmula de siempre. Para preguntas del tipo yes, no, donde queremos un yes or no for an answer. But then if you want to get information, then you're going to add WH, a WH question at the beginning, okay? Uh, WH word, I'm sorry. It can be something like where, when, why, what, which, all those things, okay? So that is the structure, guys. Bueno, hablamos de esto también, que era solamente... Una pequeña nota, que si ustedes veían esta estructura de will be able to, like this, is the same thing that saying we can. Okay, we will be able to, 
it equals to we can. Y sería lo mismo si es negativo. Si decimos we won't be able to, entonces es lo mismo como decir we can't. Es lo mismo. Es la misma, el mismo significado. Bueno, acá vimos unos ejemplos. Y por acá hay más eh, ejemplos que yo les quería mostrar a ustedes. Para que podamos eh, practicar. Ok. Ok, guys. So, eh, we have these uh, three dialogues. Ok. Dialogue number two. Dialogue number three. Dialogue number four. So, the first one, it says, that unit is so difficult. The test is tomorrow. I think I'm in trouble. Okay, and then the next person says, don't worry, I will help you. Okay, si ustedes se fijan, eh, pues aquí estamos utilizando lo que les he venido mencionando. Eh, uno de ellos dice que la unidad, lo que está estudiando es muy difícil y que piensa que está en problemas, por esa razón. Porque la prueba es para el siguiente día. Entonces, eh, la otra persona se ofrece, es algo que acaba de decidir, no es algo que ya estuviera planeado. Entonces dice, don't worry, I will help you. Okay, I will help you. Or you can say, don't worry, I'll help you. De acuerdo, lo pueden contractar también. I'll help you. I'll help you. I'll. Okay, I'll. Es como, tenemos que abrir un poquito la boca y agregar como ese sonido de L al final. Okay, somos I'll. Don't worry, I'll help you. Okay, we need to practice that. We need to practice, we need to do it one uh, over and over again until we can do it the right way, okay? So, uh, okay, let's continue. Then it says, uh, thank you so much. No problem. I will meet you at the library after school. Okay, entonces acá eh, tampoco es algo que esté planeado, ¿verdad? Está diciendo, no hay problema, eh, te encontraré en la librería eh, perdón, en la biblioteca después de la, de la escuela después de escuela, ok entonces acá guys eh, también, bueno, meet es un verbo que lo utilizamos por ejemplo cuando decimos nice to meet you, es como un gusto conocerte, pero también meet es para encontrarse o para hablar acerca de reuniones ok, you can say I have a meeting at 10 eso es que tenemos una reunión o si le dicen a alguien, eh, I will meet you at the library, like in this case, we are saying that eh, vamos a encontrarnos con esa persona en algún lugar, ¿ok? De acuerdo. No sé si vamos bien hasta el momento, guys. ¿Está todo claro? ¿Una pregunta? It's good, teacher. No questions. Okay, very good. No questions, guys. All right, so we are going to uh, we're going to take a look at the next example that we have. So example number two. It says, uh, Romy, will you help me get the door? I am working on something. And then the other person says, sure, I'll get it. Y bueno, la conversación continúa, ¿verdad? Who was it? The postman. Guess what came in the mail? Bueno, en este caso, eh, si ustedes se fijan, eh, también, ¿verdad? Es otro tipo de situación. Esta persona eh, está ocupada haciendo, so haciendo algo, entonces le pide ayuda a, a otra persona. Entonces le pregunta, will you help me get the door? Okay, will you help me get the door? Entonces le está preguntando si le puede ayudar a ir a la puerta, a, a ver quién es que está llamando. Y entonces, pues, context contestamos utilizando ese mismo eh, tiempo, ¿ok? Sure, I will get it. O you can say, sure, I'll get it. ¿Ok, guys? Entonces, eh, para este tipo de situaciones lo vamos a utilizar. Eh, vamos a ver. Small, can I speak to one? Hello, Paul, this is Tara. When is Tara for lunch? Y, pues, otro caso en el que se utiliza bastante, guys, es cuando ustedes hacen una llamada de teléfono y quieren hablar con una persona, la persona no se encuentra, y entonces eh, probablemente no sabemos cuándo esa persona va a estar de regreso, entonces eh, muchas veces nosotros dejamos un mensaje, o preguntamos cuándo estará de regreso, entonces en esos casos también lo utilizamos, porque no tenemos la certeza de cuándo es que va a suceder algo, ¿ok? Bueno, entonces solamente se los quería mostrar rapidito para que lo viéramos aquí, Creo que, bueno, 
lo mejor es que lo practiquemos, ¿ok? Entonces, vamos a avanzar, guys. Vamos a avanzar para que podamos practicar. Vaya, esto es con respecto a Will. Eh, luego, no sé si tienen alguna duda antes de que continuemos. Supongo que todo está claro, ¿verdad? No questions, right? For the moment, yes. <laughs> okay, so no questions at the moment. Thank you, Maritza. Okay, so then uh, the other option that we have when it comes to uh, talking about the future, we can also use going to, okay? Uh, with going to, we can we can express the future using be going to plus the infinitive, okay? ¿Qué es lo que significa esto? Que nosotros también podemos expresar el futuro utilizando be going to. ¿Por qué es be going to y no solamente going to? Porque esto se utiliza con el verbo to be, ¿de acuerdo? Es como I am going to um, spend the morning at home, por ejemplo. Entonces, si ustedes se fijan, acá está la forma del verbo to be, ¿ok? Que es am. Entonces, nosotros lo vamos a utilizar con esta forma, con esta estructura. Es el sujeto, el verbo to be, y luego esta parte going to, ¿ok? Y luego, a continuación de going to, nosotros vamos a colocar un verbo en la forma en la forma base, en la forma infinitivo, ¿ok? La forma de infinitivo es cuando no está conjugado, que es lo que estamos diciendo acá. I'm going to spend the morning at home. O oh, I'm going to make sandwich, a sandwich, por ejemplo, uh, for breakfast. Okay, so I'm going to make a sandwich for breakfast. Entonces, si se fijan, siempre va a ser la misma estructura. Sujeto, verbo to be, going to, y a continuación el verbo en infinitivo. Y luego de eso, pues podemos utilizar eh, cualquier complemento, como en este caso. Entonces, this is one of the examples, guys. This is for an affirmative sentence. What happens if we want to make, eh, aquí está más abajo, aquí se los he colocado. Sujeto, verbo to be, que es am, is, or are, and then going to plus the infinitive, ¿ok? This is for affirmative sentences, guys. Luego, para oraciones negativas, nosotros vamos a utilizar eh, lo mismo, solamente vamos a colocar esta parte de not después del verbo to be. Entonces, por ejemplo, podemos decir I am not going to text my mother today. Entonces estamos diciendo eh, no le voy a enviar un mensaje de texto a mi madre el día de ahora. Por ejemplo, ¿verdad? Or you can say I'm not going to call. Entonces acá puede ser cualquier verbo, pero siempre y cuando esté de la forma infinitivo. ¿Ok? Entonces sería sujeto, verbo to be, not, going to, más el verbo. ¿Ok? Eso es para las oraciones negativas. Y para preguntas, eh, solamente cambiamos el orden. Acá no se los había colocado, pero para preguntas solo cambiamos el orden. Y diríamos, are you going to go to work? Ok, entonces acá, si ustedes se fijan, tenemos otro ejemplo. Eh, simplemente cambiamos el orden. Eh, ¿Qué pasa acá? Eh, si ustedes se fijan, going to es lo que siempre va a estar. Esto siempre se mantiene. Y luego va el verbo en infinitivo. Ok, no nos confundamos. No vamos a decir, are you going to work or are you going eh, to work? Because that would be something different. Eh, entonces, si queremos hacerlo de la forma be going to, esto siempre lo vamos a mantener. Y a continuación va el verbo. Lo podemos cambiar acá. Are you going to travel? To work, for example, that would be another example, guys. 
teacher, what mean uh, without the, the, the verb? Are you going to work? Just like this. En este caso, solo diríamos yeah. eh, como vas al, vas al trabajo o vas a... Sí, vas al trabajo. Es un poco diferente. Eh, porque sería, are you going to work? Vamos a ver. No, en este caso sería, vas a trabajar, vas a trabajar, y en el otro sería, vas a ir a trabajar. Al trabajo. O vas a ir al trabajo. Oh, ok, ok. Entonces, ahí está Thank la you. diferencia. You're welcome. Entonces, ahí está la diferencia, guys. Eso les quería comentar porque puede ser un poquito confuso a veces, ¿verdad? I think that uh, los de, 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 de interrogant, de, de question mark. Uh -huh. Yes. We have, yes, we have the question mark here, Boris. Yes. And when we only put, if you're going to work, uh, we can use the question mark. Sí, sí, lo podemos usar en ambos casos, de hecho. Y aquí sería, vamos a ver, to go to work. Acá sería, como les decía, vas a ir a trabajar. Y en el otro sería solamente como vas a trabajar. Pregun en, en forma de pregunta. But grammatically incorrect, I think. No, both, both of them are, are, are good. Yes, because this is like the progressive form. And the other option, that is the be going to structure. Okay, so both of them are good. Michelle. Sí, dígame. Podría decir, oh, trabajarás? Are you going to work? Sí, sería prácticamente lo mismo. Estamos preguntando si va a trabajar en el futuro. Así que, sí. Okay. Así que eso sería, guys. Esto es prácticamente la forma del presente continuo, ¿ok? A veces nos confundimos entre el presente continuo y la forma be going to. Be going to es una cosa, ¿ok? Que es esto que estamos viendo acá. Y el presente continuo es como cuando nosotros decimos I am uh, working uh, tomorrow. Si ustedes se fijan, acá no tenemos la forma be going to, ¿ok? No estamos diciendo I am going to work tomorrow. We're not saying that. We're saying I am working tomorrow. Y esto también es otra forma que utilizamos para el futuro. Pero for este, for el, para el futuro también, correcto. Pero este es el presente continuo, ¿ok? Es diferente. A little confused. <laughs> sí, entiendo, entiendo, Boris. Eh, sí, solamente se los quería mencionar. O sea, si usted se fija acá, dice I am working, ¿ok? A continuación del, del verbo to be, tenemos un verbo de la forma ing, ¿ok? Y en la forma de eh, be going to sería I am going to work tomorrow. Entonces acá, a continuación del verbo to be, no tenemos el verbo en la forma ing, sino que lo tenemos going to. Y luego tenemos el verbo en la forma base, ¿ok? Es diferente. Y normalmente, pues, cuando utilizamos esta forma de, del presente continuo, siempre nosotros utilizamos eh, como una hora o un momento específico. ¿De acuerdo? Porque es para planes. Similar a be going to. Pero es un poco más limitado porque nosotros tenemos como que especificar en qué momento se va a realizar la acción. Es como cosas que están candal, can, que están en un calendario, en una agenda ya. Agendadas. Que no sé si está claro esta parte, guys. Eh, no quiero confundirlos mucho. Eh, tenemos el presente continuo y tenemos be going to. Ahorita nosotros estamos con be going to, ¿ok? Sorry, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, Ana. 
Uh, you yeah. say that when we are talking about the present continuum, we are going to use a specific hour. Sí, básicamente. Yes? Básicamente, uh, básicamente, yes, uh, Ana, most of the times uh, you need to use like a date or time so you can talk uh, using the present continuous. So yes, most of the times you need to use it. But not to use, when, but not when we use going to. Cuando usamos going to, no, por lo general solamente es así y ya se infiere que es para el futuro. Okay, thanks mm -hmm. You're welcome. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys this. And, eh, me gustaría mostrarles también por acá. Vamos a, vamos a terminar de ver el video que estábamos viendo ayer para que nos quede más claro. Okay? Y después de eso, si tenemos dudas, las vamos a aclarar para que podamos practicar. Entonces, eh, les voy a colocar el video rapidito. Lo vamos a ver para que podamos despejar las dudas. Okay, guys, bear with me just a second. Creo que ya lo tengo por acá. Okay. Okay, guys, please bear with me just for a moment because for some reason, my computer is not responding at this time. So I'm just waiting on my computer, guys. Just a second, please. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. Oh, okay, there it is. Okay, now sí. Vamos a poner el sonido también. Okay, vamos a escuchar esta parte. Esto es lo que estábamos viendo el día de ayer. Entonces lo vamos a escuchar eh, por acá. Vamos a ver. Vamos a escuchar por acá. Future plans when you express things about the future. Using going to and will. Now, for the main part, both of those are quite similar when you express future plans or when you express things about the future. But what we're going to learn in this class is that we're going to use be going to whenever you talk about something that you've decided on. That's the key here. Something that you've decided on, we're going to use be going to. So let me give you a quick example about that. Let's say that you're going to take a vacation. You already bought the plane ticket. You already got permission from your job so it's very unlikely that you'll change these plans in order to express these ideas you're going to use be going to to express that so for example i'm going to take vacations next week i'm going to go to f france that's just a quick example there um, you're almost sure that that event will happen on the other hand let's say that you're gonna uh, you want to take vacation but you don't know yet. You haven't even asked your boss about it yet. And so um, you're chatting with some friends and they ask you, so what are you planning to do for your vacations? And maybe you respond, well, I'm not sure. I guess I'll go to Europe next month. But I don't know. I haven't bought the tickets. I haven't asked my boss whether I can go or not. And so in order to express that idea that you haven't decided on, then we're going to use these expressions. I guess I'll just um, stay home. Th these are the examples here in the book, but um, going back to our example about vacations, I will guess I'll travel, but I'm not sure where. Uh, maybe I'll go somewhere in, in Europe. I probably will go somewhere in Europe. And that's, I mean, those are just my examples on, on how uh, you will use these expressions. But the idea here is that if you're thinking about something that you're not sure about whether that will happen or not, then you're going to use these expressions towards the right. And that's the difference that we're going to learn in this particular class. 
So quickly before we talk about this particular chart, what I would like to do is just present the structure on how to form sentences with be going to. So the examples on the left side of this chart. In order for us to express our thoughts and ideas about the future with be going to, we're going to have some sort of subject. So in this case, I'm going to say um, I'm going to stay home for the weekend. Okay, That's what I want to express. Um, and so in order for us to form that idea, I'm going to have some sort of subject. This is going to follow the verb to be. And then this is going to follow going to. If you notice, going to is some kind of auxiliary to form our ideas in the future. And then this is going to follow the verb in its present form. And then whatever complements. So like in this case, I'm going to stay home for the weekend. Right? So this is what I've decided on doing. That's my plan. And so if you see towards the left side of the chart, we said that we're going to use be going to plus the verb for plans that you've decided on. Now, let me talk about things that I haven't decided on. So in order for me. <clears throat> okay, guys. Entonces, en esta parte, pues, como les estaba comentando, ¿verdad? Nosotros utilizamos be going to para planes que ya hemos decidido. ¿De acuerdo? Y aquí está la estructura que acabamos de ver. El sujeto, verbo to be, going to, el verbo y el complemento, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, tenemos prácticamente las dos situaciones. Lo que estudiamos ayer, utilizando will, que es para cosas que no hemos decidido todavía. Entonces, eh, tenemos la misma pregunta en ambos casos. So, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Eh, if we already have decided what we are going to do, if we have already a plan that we decided before, then we are going to answer using going to. Okay, so I'm going to say, I'm going to relax at the beach. Okay, we are going to go surfing every day. Okay, that is something that we decided already. That is the reason why we use going to. Then the next example, it says, I'm not going to do anything special. Okay, I already decided about that. Y por el otro lado, pues tenemos a will. Si ustedes se fijan, es la misma pregunta. What are you going to do? Uh, and the answer in this case, using will, because I don't know, because I haven't decided yet, like he mentions in in the video, he says that probably you haven't even asked your boss about you have permission to go on vacation or not. So in that case, you can say, I am not sure. I guess I'll just stay home. Okay. No estoy seguro. Estas son claves que, en las cuales nos vamos a guiar para poder utilizar will. Como estábamos hablando ayer, cuando utilizamos I guess, o I think, o maybe, o probably, in that case, we're going to use will, ¿ok? Entonces tenemos, I'm not sure, I guess, I'll just stay home, o maybe, I'll watch a few DVDs, ¿ok? Entonces ahí está la diferencia entre los dos. Vamos a continuar, guys, vamos a terminar de ver el video. Mire talk about possibilities that will happen, then I'm going to use the expressions towards the right. Now let me talk about the possibilities of what I'm going to do at my house. And so um, what I want to do is present this structure towards the right because what I want to do is I want to think about the things that I haven't made a decision on. So in order for me to express those ideas, what I want to do is I want to have some sort of possibility, if you will, all right? And so what do I mean by that? Well, the expressions such as I guess, all right? The expression maybe, uh, the expression I think, the expression I probably, okay? Um, and so that's what I want you to notice here, right? So, well, I'm gonna stay home for the weekend, I guess, and then this is gonna follow a subject. I will watch the football game, all right? And so I could do the same thing for the rest of the possibilities that I mentioned. These are just words that will guide me towards expressing that this is not something that I've decided on. Maybe I'll watch the football game. 
uh, I think I'll watch the football game. I probably will watch the football game. Now, um, with this last one here, I would like for you to pay attention to that one. Um, this is not going to follow the subject, okay? Uh, it will just continue to follow. I probably will watch the football game. But for the rest, you will need that subject there in the middle, okay? I guess I'll watch the football game. Maybe I'll watch the football game. I think I'll watch the football game. But however, with this one, you don't want to use uh, a subject there in the middle. I probably will watch the football game. Ok, entonces acá, guys, eh, tenemos, él nos acaba de explicar cómo vamos a utilizar estas expresiones, ok. Entonces, ¿cuál va a ser la estructura? Para todas estas, como I guess, maybe, en I think, vamos a utilizar la expresión I guess, maybe, o I think, y luego de eso vamos a utilizar la estructura que ya sabíamos, ok, que es el sujeto, el verbo will, luego el verbo en la forma base, y luego el complemento. Entonces, I guess I will watch the football game. Maybe I will watch the football game. O I think I will watch the football game. But what happens with this? When it comes to I probably, en este caso nosotros no vamos a colocar I, luego de I probably, sino que va a ser I probably will watch the football game. Just like that. So, este es diferente de los otros. ¿Ok? Entonces, why is different teacher? ¿Cómo? Why is teacher is different. Eh, porque en este no se necesita, sería como no sería gramaticalmente correcto, porque usted usted está diciendo acá eh, probablemente veré el partido de o el juego de fútbol, pero en este caso usted está diciendo eh, yo supongo que veré el partido de fútbol. Entonces, acá sí es necesario para que tenga sentido la oración. Pero en este caso, pues no es necesario. Sería como una redundancia, por así decirlo. Ok. Thank si usted dice, you. I probably I will watch. Yo probablemente... That's only, yo. That's only works with probably. That's only with probably. That is correct. That is the only exception that we have. But then when it comes to, I guess, maybe... And I think then we are going to use this structure that we have here, okay? Entonces, lo que vamos a hacer, guys, es que vamos a practicar esto, okay? Vamos a practicarlo para que nos lo memoricemos. Entonces, acá, bueno, si pueden, por favor, anótenle, anoten esto para que lo tengan ahí a la mano. Anotemos esta parte del be going to y también pueden anotar esta parte de acá. O tómenle una captura o como ustedes gusten, ¿verdad? Por lo general es mejor anotar porque así el cerebro trabaja un poquito más. Pero como ustedes gusten, guys. La cosa es de que nos lo tenemos que aprender. Ok. ¿Estamos listos, guys? ¿Lo puedo pasar? ¿Ya lo tienen? Yes. Ok, very good. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Ok, so we're going to continue. Let's see. To use uh, a subject there. Think about your next vacation. And make a plan of where you want to go. And then within that plan, think of all the possibilities. And of course, use this topic that we're covering today in class. So you may use these questions to help you with this exercise. How are you going to spend your next vacation? Where are you going to go? When are you going to take your next vacation? How long are you going to be on vacation? Now, if you look at, let's say, the second question, where are you going to go? You might have decided to take your vacation, and you might know exactly where to go. And then, again, you might not. So if you're sure about it, then you're going to use the expressions towards the left. You're going to use be going to plus, um, you know, whatever complement that exists. So you're going to use, I'm going to go to Europe. All right. That could be um, 
your plan. But if you don't know, you haven't decided on, I'm not sure of where I'm going to go. I guess I'll travel, but I don't know where. And so you'll use the expressions towards. Ok, entonces, ¿qué es lo que vamos a hacer, guys? Utilizando estas preguntas que están acá, nosotros vamos a, vamos a trabajar en parejas o en grupos y vamos a hablar acerca de esto, utilizando estas expresiones que tenemos acá. Entonces, vamos a preguntar primero, ¿cómo vas a pasar tu siguiente vacación? Esto no lo vamos a inventar. O sea, si no tienen ustedes planeado una vacación, no importa, simplemente para poder practicar, nos vamos a inventar algo, ¿verdad? Entonces, vamos a decir cómo vamos a pasar nuestra vacación, a dónde vamos a ir, pueden decir cualquier lugar que gusten, y dónde, no, perdón, cuándo, cuándo acá, eh, en la siguiente, en la número 3, cuándo te vas a ir de vacación, eh, tu próxima vacación, y por cuánto tiempo vas a estar en vacación, ¿ok? So, in this case, guys, you can use uh, going to, we are going to use both of them, ¿ok? Uh, let's pretend that you guys already have plans for the vacation, and then let's also pretend that you don't have any plans for that, okay? So you can use will. So you can say, for example, I am not sure, I guess I'll just stay at home, for example. Or you can say something different. But the point is that we need to practice using these uh, two expressions that we have with going to and will. Eso es lo que vamos a hacer. Vamos a practicar para que no nos aburramos, guys. Eso va a ser lo último para que después nos podamos eh, ir a casa. Bueno, a descansar. Así que, por favor, copiémoslo. Bueno, de hecho, quizás se lo voy a enviar al WhatsApp, por si acaso. Se lo voy a enviar. Para que podamos practicar. Yo lo voy a estar eh, revisando para que podamos avanzar con esto, ¿ok? Aquí vamos. Bueno, ahí se los acabo de compartir, guys, por si lo necesitan. Y vamos a practicar, ¿de acuerdo? Voy a crear los grupos para que ustedes puedan practicar en grupos. Ok, antes de que lo hagamos, ¿tienen alguna pregunta, guys? Antes de que empecemos. No questions. Ok, very good. So, here we go, guys. Vamos a ver. Siete, ok, ahí está. Ahí vamos. Got it. Ay, nos están grabando. First, ahí. Ok, let me see. Eh, ¿Dónde es que está esto? Let me see. At the. Do you want to say to the. To the chat? Yes. Or do you want that I say. No, no, no I, I can send directly to you. Let me see. But in, I am sharing group, in, the, WhatsApp, in the chat. It's, it's 
send a send a, a, a question. Yes. Yes. Let me see. The question, no, es que no me parece. Okay. Watching let me see, on, let on, me see. Uh, begin. How are you going to spend your next vacation, Alejandro? Uh, okay, let me see. Um, I'm going to travel to Costa Rica. Um, to, I don't know what is his name, uh, Sembrar, uh, a few of, of potatoes, I don't know. And you? Uh, really? Yes, yes. But is your, but is your vacation or, or, for, or your job? No, you don't know that I, I don't like the vacations like a, like a visitor, like a guest. I don't like just go to the places to see or, or to watch, uh, for example, buildings or the sea, the beach, or I, I don't know. I don't like the rest. I don't like, I don't like just to stay in a place uh, watching Mm -hmm. things or places i don't know why but i i feel boring doing that in in a, in a real life <laughs> that is not an example it is it is true so when i when i uh when i go uh, for vacations i always search something to do always and I okay. have uh, some, some parents in Costa Rica. I have some parents in Costa Rica who uh -huh. have, uh, who have uh, terrenos donde sembrar. So have when, you ever when been I... before in Costa Rica? Excuse me? Have you ever been in Costa Rica before? Yes, yes. I, I, I traveled to Costa Rica almost two twice uh, a year before. Okay. Since the pandemic, I don't, I, I don't travel since the pandemic, but uh, before the pandemic, I traveled twice, twice a year to Costa Rica. It's very, it's very uh, near and it's very cheap too. So there is not an expensive uh, ship, you know, before okay. the that pandemic. Is, I, I don't know. I don't know now. <laughs> is more ship here, right? Yes. Shipper. Yes. No, no the, the shipper, yes. The lifestyle or the prices in Costa Rica are not cheaper because all, all things, all things uh from the from the uh, basic salary to the all uh -huh. things that you want to to buy all is uh, at double price all okay. the minimum salary is uh, 600 dollar or 700 dollars for example is 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 the double of of ours in Salvador but the travel, Aww. just the ticket, you know, just the ticket to the bus or just the ticket to the aircraft, the ticket are uh -huh. are ship. Yeah, and and as my family in Costa Rica have a living the in the in the in the campo. <laughs> Hello, guys. Oh, no, no, they call me and they. <laughs> Yes, it's too much. <laughs> Hello, you. guys. How are you doing? Hello, teacher. Hello, teacher. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo van? ¿Cómo están con sus ejemplos? ¿Ya pudieron avanzar? ¿Cómo vamos? ¿Alguna pregunta? No, okay. yet. Um, A ver, cuéntenme qué, qué han desarrollado hasta este momento. A ver. 
a question this uh, this question okay uh -huh. for okay. example uh -huh. how are you going to spend your next vacation uh -huh. and marisa says uh, i i'm going to relax in the beach okay the beach. and uh -huh. and we uh, Say, and he says, she says, yes, at sunset park, I I going to go to sunset park. Oh, okay, okay, very good. Uh -huh. Sunset yeah. park. Yes, I haven't had the opportunity to go there yet, but it seems really nice. So that sounds good. Yes. Yes, okay, very good. And what about the future? Let's say that you don't know where you are going to go. How can we say it using will? For example, my, my answer uh, is I'm not sure. Uh, maybe I mm -hmm. I will be traveling. I will be traveling. Okay, okay. So yes, in that case, uh, remember Jenny that you need to say, uh, I'm not sure, uh, maybe I will travel, okay? So it I is, will I yes. will, and then the verb in the base form, okay? Ah, Just like okay. that. I so, will, I will travel. Mm -hmm. So you can say, maybe I will travel uh, to another city or maybe to another country, things like that. Uh-huh. For example, in the second question, where are you going to go? Uh, uh, maybe I, I will, I will travel to France. <laughs> France. That's good. Okay, very good. Yes, very good example. Maybe I will travel to France, to France. Okay. Very good. So you can say it like that, or you can say, I'm not sure. I guess I'll uh, travel to France. Okay. Things like that. Okay. So, very good, very good, yeah. Muy bien, muy bien, guys, me gusta mucho. Veo que sí uh -huh. estamos practicando. Eh, ¿no tienen, ¿Tienen alguna otra pregunta antes de que los deje? Pues, por mí, ahorita no. Pero ahorita no, ok, very good. Uh -huh. Ok, so, no, very good. Ok, so I will leave you guys and I will talk to you in a moment, ok? So, bye, guys. Bye. 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 Ok. Yes. Um, when are you going to take your next vacation, Wendy? I'm not sure because I don't have vacation now in my life. Así que... Mm. <laughs> I don't maybe. believe. Maybe I'm going to... Quiero ver. Okay. Wendy? <laughs> Metro Centro. <laughs> Sorry, boy. <laughs> Wendy? Wow. Recuerde que si dice usted uh, que no sabe, digamos que no está segura, y dice maybe, in that case you need to say maybe I will go uh, to Metro uh, Center, for example, ¿ok? Ah, uh, that's right. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. cuando, no, cuando no estamos seguros, vamos a decir uh, maybe I will, ¿ok? No vamos a utilizar going to. I will. I will go. What, but when are me sure is uh i going to eat pupusas to, to planet de renderos sí eh, lo puede decir así si usted está segura digamos que ya hizo un plan anteriormente digamos con la familia o algo así en ese caso sí verdad I'm pero si es go. i'm going to eat pupusas uh, with my family because we plan before okay we decided that that is going to happen but you cannot say maybe i am going to that is not possible okay okay teacher okay solamente eso guys por lo demás estamos bien pero recuerden cuando no estamos seguros vamos a utilizar will pero si es un plan ya algo que hemos decidido going to okay, okay. i am going to Tunko Beach. Uh. <laughs> Beach. Okay, good. Very good. Okay, Wendy, how long, how long are you going to be on vacation? 
Maybe two days. Hmm? Maybe two days. Maybe two days. Ah, okay. Days. Uh, only that because <laughs> that's it. Yes. Okay. Okay, that's fine. That's fine, guys. Yes. If you feel like that's enough, that's fine. I just wanted to give you some opportunities so we can practice because I know that sometimes that is the best thing. And actually, when I was learning English, I didn't have somebody so I can practice. So it was really sad for me because I wanted to talk to somebody and I wanted to practice. So uh, that's the reason why I give you this time so you can practice. But if you feel like this is enough, then that's fine. And actually, the time is almost over. So I think that we are going to yes, finish. Yes, teacher. Yes. <laughs> no, quiero que, no quiero que se queden hasta muy tarde, ¿verdad? No quiero quitarle de su tiempo. Así que yo creo que ya casi vamos a terminar. Ok. Ok, teacher. Así que los dejo okay. por ahora. Thank you, teacher. Ok. Hey, thanks, Yo, teacher. Yo voy a... Thanks, teacher. Vamos a ver. Okay, there we go. Welcome back, guys. Okay. Okay. Ya casi, ya casi estamos todos. Así que vamos a esperar. Ahí está. Welcome back, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for staying until the end. Thank you. All right. So, well, I hope that you guys had the opportunity to practice. I was checking on some of you guys to see how you guys were doing. And I can see that you, you were doing a good job. I think that we probably need to practice a little bit more. So, if you feel like we need to practice more, uh, you can let me know tomorrow because the time is almost over. Okay, so I just wanted to tell you guys that if you don't have any questions, uh, this is going to be it for today. And I will see you actually on Thursday, okay? I almost forgot. So tomorrow we don't have class, okay? Remember that tomorrow we have off. So- Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, teacher. Okay, yes. teacher. Sure. So enjoy the holiday, guys, and I will see you on Thursday, okay? Teacher, teacher. Yes. I have a question. Dígame, dígame, Boris. Sorry, uh, I want to know uh, uh, we use will as a modal verb, uh, but will have another kind of mean. When well, we use will uh, uh -huh. in, a, in a legal de declaration as my will. Yes, yes. So basically, uh, will, like other words, it can be a verb, uh, it can also be a noun, just like you're saying. So usually it is a verb, it can be an auxiliary verb too, and it can be a noun. For example, when, just like you said, digamos cuando alguien muere, deja su testamento, ¿verdad? En ese caso, eso sería un nombre. Y se le dice will, ok, my will living will o de, se le llama de otras formas también entonces en es, es son, eh, basically it's uh, what you want to do eh, or what you want to uh, basically to happen after you die ok, so basically that's what it is so en ese caso sirve como un nombre entonces sí eh, y eso pasa con muchas palabras, pasa también en el español, verdad hay palabras que tienen un significado como verbo y también se pueden utilizar como un nombre. Así que sí, Boris, se puede utilizar como un nombre también. You're welcome. Okay, uh, any other question, guys, before we go? No teacher. No teacher. No teacher. 
Okay, very good. So guys, I will see you on Thursday and I hope you have a, a good holiday. So I will see you back on Thursday, guys. Have a great evening. Thanks. Bye-bye. Good evening, teacher. Bye, teacher. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.